<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. He says to an empty room. All right, there's gonna be a lot of shaking around for a second while I'm trying to get this camera. No, not like that. That's not how I'm trying to get the camera. I don't know. I just feel like it, it shakes. Ah, ah, eh. I don't know. Maybe if we're not. Maybe if we're careful. Maybe if we're careful. All right. So, <clears throat> on the YouTube channel, if you want to watch me paint things a solid color, you can see where, when, and where I painted these brown ish. This foam really soaked up this paint a lot more, I believe, than this foam did. Again, I think we're going to get very similar, very enjoyable results, but it's different. So we used, not that one, we used burnt umber. We based it with black, of course. Based it in black. Burnt umber for the second coat. And then from here, we're dry brushing. <clears throat> we're going to start with a slightly browner, or slightly lighter brown than the uh, burnt umber with a nutmeg brown. And then I'll move over to the harvest orange. Probably just a skosh, not not a whole whole lot at all on these tables. But the key to dry brushing is to have a dry brush. You don't want to use a brush that you've already used and gotten into the water and gotten all, you know, had to clean off once already because the way you apply the paint needs your brush bristles to be as not congealed as possible. And you know, dipping it in water and squeezing it out and running it on your paper towel or whatever, that definitely uh, takes away from that. Always shake your paint. Always shake your paint. Get a paint shaker if you want. But shake your paint. Now, for this first uh, dry brush, I don't, honestly, I don't think I'm going to use this one. I've got another one in mind. You'll figure out what brushes you like for what. Ooh. Found it. You'll figure out. I mean, because I've got a bunch of brushes. I've got four, six, eight of them over there. I've got two more packs in my in my drawer. It smells like vinegar. I tried to tell my wife that whenever we bought this desk, and I put it together and I opened this drawer for the first time. It smelled like vinegar. I have no clue what would cause, <laughs> I mean, aside from vinegar, I have no clue what would cause it. So anyhow, lightly dip the tip. Kind of brush it off. I made the mistake of doing on paper towels. And then start somewhere inconspicuous if you, inconspicuous, inconspicuous if you would like. Start on the bottom. Start in the middle. Where nobody's going to see it. But for this, we're looking... I'm going to start off saying probably about 50% coverage. 50 to 60% coverage with this dry brush. So, don't be afraid to really kind of give this one. See how that the first little couple strokes came out? And then, instead of going and dipping back in your paint, go to where you wiped it off. A couple of times before you have to, before you go back into the paint. 
And when you do go into the paint, like I said, just kind of. And when we're doing this, we're not pressing real, real hard. We're not pressing hard at all. We're just grazing the top. And I'll switch over to the top there. But and go back to your little your little wipe off area. It also helps to go against the grain. Swash it against the grain. Whenever you can. I understand some spots is like, oh, that, that grain goes very inconveniently. So do it the other way then. It's fine. Again, character. This is just the base. I'm just showing you what I do. It's your table, your land. Do what you want. Do what you want. Make the things that please you. You may not like this uh, this wood pattern or whatever. Figure out a different way. This is not the only way, and there's there's plenty of other crafters out there who have different ways about things. I'm following. Uh, his name is Wylock. He is the one that I got most of my ideas from, most of my techniques from. He's the reason I use the two and a two and a half inch grid instead of the or well one and a quarter inch grid instead of the one inch grid because I believe that's it's smart. It gives you more room for things. It's it's the way to do it. Yeah, that foam is really, uh, <clears throat> really drinking up this paint. This is definitely not coming out the way I thought it would. Is it bad? Still, no. Still, it's fine. But is it what I thought it was going to be? No. No, it's not. And that is okay. Again. Just do. Just make things. Don't get upset if it doesn't turn out exactly the way you want. Unless you have like a very specific reason why this needs to look like that. You know? <clears throat> then don't worry about it. Same thing, same thing with life most times. Don't look at a defeat as the end of it all. Always take that step to try again. You don't have to do it the same way. Do it a different way. Find a better way. If you think you found, you found the best way and it's still not working out for you, ask for help. We're all human, I'm pretty sure. Well, most of us, I'm not gonna say all of us. <clears throat> but a lot of us like to help. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really having to I'm really having to hit this pretty hard with that brown for it to get the effect that I'm wanting. But still <clears throat> my brush isn't caked up. I'm not just lathering the paint on there. I'm giving it a very small it it looks like a lot until it dries. Like look at I'm not sure if you can see the difference there, but it's all right so <clears throat> i realized with how little it's actually look because like look at that see how i painted that in a few minutes it's not gonna look like that it's gonna be a lot lighter so bump that 50 to 60% coverage up to probably like a 70 to 80% coverage. 
on probably each face is the way you want to judge it. Whoop. See, that's pretty thick, but it should be okay, honestly. Don't get your sides. <clears throat> if you do, you'll tell. You'll be able to tell. You'll notice it. Even just the slightest hint, you know, is, is more than nothing. You don't have to really go bananas on them. So on my YouTube channel is where I put the first coat on that and where I also did this here in the background is a uh, is a bar. I know it looks amazing right now, but He did it. <clears throat> As usual, everybody we're watching the presses, right? One day we'll change shows. And that day is not today. Just to paint my minis, paint my minis. Slapping them with some color, giving them some life. Hey, hey, look at that guy, man. He is a wobbly. <laughs> I may try and fix that. I'm gonna try and mayhaps correct the wobbly. So I do believe I've decided that I will probably not do anything live on the weekends. The live will only be during the day between probably eight and two, right about. I feel like that'll be the best for my schedule, picking up the cheerings. And again, probably shooting for three times a week. So we might do a night, a nighttime one. <coughs> but, uh, as of right now, I think mornings is what I'm shooting for.
So here in a minute, when I want to switch paint, but I don't want to switch my dry brush, dry brush brush. We're going to figure out the best way to go about it. Ooh. See, they make long paintbrushes so you can scratch your face and not have to move your hands too far. It's science, look it up. We only speak facts here in, here in the kitchen. Bench. B bench. Again, trying to go mainly against the grain because the only colors you want in the grain are the black or the first layer brown that we added. That might have been too much coverage on that, but it'll be fine. Gotta remember, most paint will darken up a decent amount whenever you uh, whenever you apply it, whenever it dries. definitely try a matte gesso finish instead of a gloss because I mean I like that but that is pretty shiny you know honestly tables ain't shiny especially old wooden tables in a tavern dusty grimy Taking a drink. No, oh, she got it wrong. Just a little, uh, little dry brushing. Nice and easy, like. Now, this last color, we are going to uh, moderate severely. But where we do use it is going to be heavy, if that makes sense. Uh, we're looking at probably like 70% coverage for this color. We're looking at maybe 20 to 30% coverage for that one. 
So like, very little, very little in the grand scheme of things. So dry brushing is something that adds a lot of flavor to something that is textured. Oh no. I found a side not textured. Well, crash course. I just use, I used to have a pick set, but you just draw on it. You draw little lines. It'll be fine. Squiggly lines, mind you. All right, fix that problem. Easy peasy, easy peasy, looks right. All right. You know, I think I might have poured just about the right amount. That doesn't happen very often, people. Always take that as a blessing. I didn't waste any paint. So we got a new bed when we moved. And we got a bigger bed because, well, I'm a bigger guy. And, uh, in our old bed, our dog wasn't allowed to sleep up there because we just didn't have enough room. Now we have plenty of room for him to sleep up there. But he now thinks that the whole bed is his because we let him up there for a little bit. So we'll wake up and he'll be like in between our faces. But anytime I'm down here doing anything, he's sleeping on that bed. The, the biggest thing is usually the more layers you do, especially if you do them right, not the more um, like coats, but layers, Sh shading and shadowing. Better, better something's going to look because like the difference, the the difference between this and that is really not a lot. But the difference between this and, well, with that one dry, it'll be a, a better, a better candidate. But hang on. Let me finish it up. Let me finish it up, then we'll chat. Good. Yeah. So the difference between this and this, it <laughs> they're all separate, aren't they? It's pretty vast, but it's only two colors, you know? But like, that looks a lot more. So for a lot of things, don't be afraid to experiment and test out. I bet if I found a shade in between this one and this one, that would look pretty dang cool too. I think that would add to the flavor, you know. Know what I mean, Vern? 
Okay. So what I'm going to do, instead of dunking my brush, I'm just going to use my paper towel. Because this is obviously not a new brush. Use a paper towel and just uh, wipe as much of it off as you can. And honestly, when you're dry brushing, you don't want like a brand new, nice, solid brush like this guy. Ooh, don't fall off. This guy, look how jagged he is. He's rough. He'd be, he's perfect for dry brushing. I don't know what I used on him last though, because he's stiff. So, who knows? Yeah, there's that shaking. Sorry, I apologize. All right, but we're good. We've gotten ninety percent of that paint out. You know, it's not giving me. It's taking a lot to get any more out. Shake it. You hear that? It's a good shake. Just a touch. I'm not going to use very much of this at all. So that. Okay. Then we're doing the same thing, but it, well, same kind of thing. This time, however, when I strike it, it's going to be a little more deliberate, a little more aimed, and I want to kind of, I don't know, add accent with it. It needs to be a little bit stronger than the last. It's going to be stronger because it is orange, you know, instead of the browns we've been using. But something like that, that should dry out pretty nice and look all right. And then probably hit the, hit it again with another decent. See, and then see how quickly it has changed from like a pretty blaring spot in your face to just, oh, just, a, it's just a touch, really. So don't be afraid to go ahead and slam it. Get it, get it good on those first couple, first couple blasts. Again, kind of lightly touch your brush off. Don't do the whole flicking it out like we did on the other one as much as we did. Because when, again, when you strike, you want to be a little more deliberate. That fridge that they're giving away now just now made a frozen yogurt and ice cream. The fridge did.
And they gave away such random stuff, a hot dog stand. Like straight up for the streets of New York, hot dog stand. Yeah, no, they came him the new car. That last one didn't have a new car, so this one had to, you know? Yeah, I was at 13, probably around at 13. Again, while we are dry brushing, we are still trying to go mostly against the grain, if we can manage it. I'm missing something. No, I'm not. No, there it is, there it is. Excuse me, excuse me. Just gotta lose your mind every now and then, you know. You know how it goes. Yeah, it's pretty thick. We're good. Blast right there. Blast right there. Man, they do this to me every time at the end of this bob at the end of the show. Like Pluto goes into like standby mode. Ooh, okay, I didn't miss it though. I was on autopilot, 2,000. 2,500, that's not terrible. Let's see how far she was off. Well, 2 9, the guy wins. Good job, fella. You got a new car, a fridge that makes yogurt. <laughs> oh no, another spot that I missed. Can't take me nowhere, man. Sorry. I apologize for my transgressions. Do, 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 do. I may go back and hit that first one a couple more times with this. Not a couple more, just give it a couple good. Yeah, just like, yeah, like that. Yeah.
Bench time. Now, I mean, you're shooting for the same coverage, but it is a lot smaller, so you don't have to, um, hey, 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 no, you don't have to go too bonkers on it, you know. But this is the final step. This is the final, uh, final countdown, if you will. Uh, from here we will coat these with some gesso because of its protective properties it just kind of makes it a little more stable a little more sturdy capable of withstanding the players, the cats, the spilled drinks and the likes. Very handy. This bench is a little, got a little, I got a little heavy on it. Get a little heavy, a little heavy, heavy handed on it. Heavy handed a little bit, a little bit heavy handed. I don't know, you can edit, edit this stuff out, I guess. I need an editor. I need to need to get enough followers to need an editor. <laughs> or do I get the followers by editing? I'm gonna rely on my personality. Lovely dining table. Lovely dining table set. Ooh, Ooh. three fifty, thirty five fifty, or thirty nine ninety. It's a four piece or five piece table. Hey, you got it right. There's 39.9. Five piece table, nice glass top. Some of these benches are going to have quite the stripes, but um, I, I designed it that way. <clears throat> See, that, that's pretty heavy. That's what I get. That's what I get for not following my rules. Not dabbing off the brush, at least. I just went in there with a full brush. It was too full. Too full and caused a mistake. The big thing about this is it does take time. Don't try and rush that time. Enjoy the time. Use the time. Reflect during the time. You know, time. Almost done. I say done. I mean, I'm almost completed this bit. Well, I guess almost done too, actually. Well, we got about 20 or more minutes. 
before I need to wrap it up so that I can prepare to go pick up my children. I wonder if I've ever been in the same building as somebody who's been on the prices right. Remember I said 20% coverage? I kind of meant that. But this one I went bananas on. But yep. So you let it dry out. And then... Cover it in gesso. Just um, cover it. Went ahead and rinsed out my brush. I'm not going to be doing any more dry brushing right now. If you don't have a brush little storage unit thing, I suggest getting one. That was really cheap and it holds dang near all my brushes. Where is that, Jesse? Ah, Mod Podge. Same concept. Uh, this is a matte. Uh, like I said, I want to use the matte instead of the gloss on these. And I mean, it's just, it's just like glue. I mean, it's a glue, honestly. It's kind of like Elmer's. Don't use Elmer's. Use this stuff instead. But it's a sealant that I use for my terrain. Now for minis, I actually have somewhere. Oh, here it is. I actually have a have an actual sealant which is a lot finer and made for the minis so it doesn't really distort them because that's really the, i would say the difference between like mod podge and elmer's glue is the viscosity Okay, so what I think I want to do is put together, or at least kind of work I'm putting together, my tavern pieces, my bar pieces. All right, so that's a piece, that's a piece, that's a piece. And these pieces is, I'm pretty sure it goes like this. Probably not. Yeah, see that. Right, and then that's gonna be. I don't have room. Man, I made all these, and I'm thinking I was gonna have room. I ain't gonna have room. Cause I was gonna put some bottles and stuff. In. I mean, I'll be able to put some bottles and stuff in in there in one layer at least. But I'm not gonna be able to do the double layer like I was wanting to. That's just not enough room. Ain't enough. Ain't enough. Even if it's this way, which I don't think it is. Yeah, it is that way. It's still. So which way? So the top got painted on both sides. Yep. So that's the, the wall. Yep. Right, so this. Why didn't I notice that? Why didn't I notice that to begin with? It doesn't go because it doesn't go underneath. It goes on top. Yeah. We can put some cool stuff in there though. It's still plenty of room, and I'm gonna get a little sides for it. That is the goal. I've got a little bit of time. 
We got time. Plug in my hot glue gun to not to jar y'all too much. That should heat up pretty quick. Because that's a shelf, obviously, and that's a shelf, obviously. So it's between these guys. That one got all kind of crumbed, cramped. I don't know what happened there. But this is definitely the top, and I want to say this was the top too. Beep, beep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then I just need to paint that. I don't know why I didn't do it to begin with. Well, oh well. Get up here, glue gun. Glue gun cord. Yanking my glue gun all over the place. Oh, sorry, that was loud. Yep. Hey, look at that. But dang, okay, so I'm only going to use one shelf. But we'll make some um, trinkets and stuff to go in there. We'll see about it anyhow. See what happens. Then we'll see what happens. Just let that glue gun heat up real quick. Uh, I, I use hot glue, but you got to be careful with it because you can end up making. I have a bookshelf that you could see through because the hot glue, like it was a bead in between the pieces instead of a bead connecting the pieces. Pulling the pieces together. Almost. Almost. Hopefully. You've also got to be careful with the hot glue gun in this foam because it is foam and it will just melt. Yep. Oh, Remember with hot glue, you do have a few precious seconds to like correct some things. If your angle's off by just a tap, touch or whatever, or if it's, it's sitting a weird, you've got you got a couple seconds. It's, it's a very very couple, not a lot, but enough usually to get what you need done. To get done what you need done. Yeah, see, we'll we'll have enough room. I mean, in there to be able to do things. I, I do hate that I wasted time and effort making those, but we'll figure out something to do with them. Ain't worried about it. A new car. Oh, it's a minivan? Got a soft spot for minivans. Another thing is if you don't let your hot gun, hot glue gun, heat up adequately when you go to apply you will come out with gaps and stuff like I was talking about on my other project because it gets too hard and it solidifies and that'll be fine like I said we'll yeah and we'll get some uh, some square pieces for the side wouldn't be able to do it with them we wouldn't get this lucky, would we? No, it's a little shallow. Unless we go on the inside like that. And that'll keep the integrity because I did measure them out like that. I measured them out to be 
Yeah, because that make him too. You know, that's the way I need to do it. Yippee skippy. We found a reason to use these. We found something to use them for, rather. I do want that to be right there. Right. So we need... We need a knife. Uh, I've lost my knives. Where the heck? Okay, hang on. Found it. Okay. Steady now, easy. We're going to get how much out of this? We're going to take how much off this? Let's put the knife down. Put the knife down, sir. Sir, put the knife down. Okay. Yep, perfect. Okay. One chunk. Coming up. Wedge him right in there. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. We've got ourselves the end of a bar. Looky there. These are way better than the other ones I built, especially once we put some bottles and stuff in there. Ooh, man. All right. Hot glue. Let's put a little bead here. Little bead there. Little bead right there on the side. Yeah. yeah. Let go. Let go. And then we gotta squeeze this sucker in there. All right. Okay. All right. Hang on. Make sure. Remember, hot glue's not that hot. Smear it off. Bob's a phony. Remember the techniques. Don't try and cut through it in one go. You get jagged edges as you saw me cleaning up a second ago. Give it a couple cuts. It takes five seconds more. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be fine. Which one is not good? <laughs> Actually, I think I want to go ahead and cut off just a little bit of this one. It was pushing that side up a little further than I want it to. So when I say a little, I mean... A little. Not, not much at all. Yeah, that just kind of sits in there instead of wedges. So, new tech, new tactic. Should have done it that way. Because I don't want it on the front there. That's all that's going to do. Oh well. That's all it's going to do. We do need to wipe that away. Maybe wipe this away. That away. And these away. Bar number one. Huh. Cool, man. Real cool. And I can even do the same thing with this one. Top. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. You can be a big pig too. Oh yeah. Sorry. 
So I'm just gonna run it. Yeah, I'm gonna pretend that's not there. <laughs> So, got a little glue on it, just gonna clean it up. Take my X-Acto. I'm not taking anything but the glue. Maybe a little bit of paint, but it's just the base coat. You saw what we're gonna go over it with. I just don't want that glue really showing up. So I just took a little bit of it. Just a little bit that I just smeared. Okay. Uh, not that one. Oh, 15. Oh, just one over the dollar, man. Sad, sad, sad. Again, just taking away a little bit, little bits of the, the hot glue that I don't like. I don't like this. Little cut. Followed by some more little cuts. I got lost. The better part of eighth of an inch, two eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch, whatever you want to call it. That's crazy.
Ooh, I don't know which one it was. Was it this one? I think for stability's sake, I'm going to put one more in the middle there, and I think honestly that little piece is going to be enough. Yeah, honestly. Guys, look at, look at, look at. We've got our last little view. Okay, let's get, all, let's get some stuff cleaned up, cleaned up. Clean up after yourself. It's much easier when you're uh, when you're done. Clean up after yourself. I'm going to unplug my hot glue gun. Safety first, safety first. Clean up some of this. Put the paint back where it kind of belongs. Tidy up. So I'm just about done with making this tavern set for my buddy. It's not bad. It's not bad, I don't think. Get you. Couple barrels just hanging out in the background. Now, of course, you know, we've got. There'll be more back here, there'll be more space, it won't be as confined as that 6x6. Builds up to a, uh, a 10x10, which is pretty large. But I think that'll, I think that'll look pretty good. That'll look pretty good. But that's about all the time I've got today. Thank you all very much for joining me. I appreciate the time you give me I hope you learn something from the time that I give you until next time keep cooking <laughs>